a very good day to all of you i hope you all are going well and so to continue with the poem ode to a west wind by shelley so this poem ode to west wind it's it's an ode and it describes about the power of west wind over earth sky and ocean so it describes the activities of west west wind on land water and sky so as in the first stanza we have read uh, that it drives the uh, dead leaves and it is considered as the destroy destroyer as well as preserver of dead leaves so it's just a uh, in it has been compared with a magician that drives away a ghost by his approach so the west wind it scatters the uh, seeds far and near and covers them with dust so that they are buried underground so in that manner it is considered as the uh, we can say preserver so it is destroyer of the seeds uh, of the dead leaves as well as preserver of the seeds so uh, this these seeds uh, they are buried underground where they remain like dead bodies in their graves till the coming of the spring season so uh, they 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 just they are just lying buried in the grave in their gra- graves till the coming of the spring when they sprout into plants which bear flowers filling the valley with sweet smells and attractive colors so the poet addresses the west wind as wild spirit moving everywhere and a destroyer and a preserver of living seeds so he says when we read the first stanza he says that west wind we have read the in the previous video we have gone through the first stanza and i hope you have all got the stanza so he has described the power of west wind over over earth that how it is it drives the dead leaves and how it preserves the seeds that lie buried underground until the spring season arrives so in the end uh, in the end of the first stanza he calls west wind as the destroyer as well as preserver and he the phrase here o oh, here so this phrase here o oh, here uh, in, in this phrase he is uh, we can say imploring west wind he is requesting west wind to impart the power that the power of which he is in dire need he is in dire need of that power so that he can incorporate that power of west wind into his poetry to bring a change in the society to bring a change in the world so as i have told you that shelley is considered a radical in his thinking in his social and political views so he was very much revolutionary in uh, in his thinking and concepts so he want just wanted to bring out a change in the society so by his by the medium of his poetry he wanted uh, to bring a change so in this poem west wind first in the three stanza he is describing the power of west wind and then the last two stanza he is imploring or requesting west wind to impart that very same power to him so that he can bring a utopia and a kind of uh, we can say new uh, society a society of his own thoughts so in if we move to second stanza the this st- second stanza it describes the power of west wind over the uh, ocean so that that what happens when west wind reaches or when west wind passes through the ocean so we read the second stanza thou on whose stream mid the steep skies commotion loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed shook from the tangled boughs of heaven and ocean angels of rain and lightning there are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce minion even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height the locks of the appro- approaching storm 
so thou dirge of the dying year to which this closing night will be the dome of a vast sepulchre vaulted with all thy congregated might of vapors from whose solid atmosphere black rain and fire and hail will burst o oh, here so the second stanza it describes the activities of the west wind in the air the west wind how it carries on its surface loose clouds and the, these loose clouds they uh, seems to have fallen from the sky uh, ju just as withered leaves fall from the trees in autumn so we can say that the clouds uh, that are floating on the surface of the west wind they are messengers of rain and lightning so no, th what the poet wants to say that the locks of the approaching storm they are spread on the airy surface of the west wind uh, like the hair uplifted from the head of a frenzied goddess okay some fears mean it so furthermore the west wind is the dirge of the dying year for which the closing night will be the dome of a big tomb vaulted with all the uh, aggregated strength of the west wind as it is seen in rain lightning and hail storm so what the poet wants to say the poet calls upon the west wind to listen to him so this stanza it's an example of the abstract ima imagery which characterizes much of shelley's poetry so it's remarkable also for its various similes and metaphors so the whole stanza it is uh, loaded with simile and metaphor and it describes that how west wind blows from the sky to the to earth and he also expresses the idea by presenting a picture which is uh, somewhat it's a the picture is vague and hazy because he compares the clouds which float on the surface of the wind to the leaves which fall on the earth so the image is uh, we can say it's a vague and it's a very hazy and it's uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult to understand also but we can understand these lines by imagining that there is a vast tree okay you have to imagine, imagine that there is a vast tree and the roots of the trees they are in the ocean and uh, what you are to imagine the branches they are high up in the sky right so the roots they are in the ocean and the branches are high up in the sky so from the branches of these tree uh, of from the branches of this tree fall clouds okay the clouds will fall in the same manner as the rotten leaves fall from an ordinary tree so just you have to uh, imagine a, kind, a vast a very big and vast tree that is where is the situ uh, where is the uh, location of the tree the root they are in the ocean and the branches they are in the sky so these clouds they they from the tree fall on the surface of the west wind just as the rotten leaves from a tree fall on the earth so these clouds fall on the surface of the west wind when there is unrest or tumult in the high sky so that is when the sky shows stormy conditions so these clouds they are messengers of rain and lightning so if you see the next stanza the poet presents the picture of a storm that is about to blow so he says that the black hair of the storm is spread on the blue waves of the surface of the west wind the hair of the storm covers the surface of the west wind all the way from the horizon to the highest point in the sky so when the sky shows stormy conditions these clouds they are called messengers of rain and lightning because they will bring rain and lightning so poet presents here the picture of a storm that is about to blow so uh the hair of the storm they are spread in this way just like the disordered hair of a, a very terrible female worshipper of god uh, of mine god uh, that mine god is a uh, he's a dionysus who moved about in a great intoxication with their long locks flowing in the air 
so what the here what the poet means is that uh, that his eyes travel from the horizon to the highest point in the sky above and the appearance of the sky indicates that the storm is about to blow a storm is brewing so the poet presents a third picture here you have a third picture the first picture is is you can see the picture of the tree the second picture is the picture of a fierce and terrible looking uh, god who is moving in intoxication uh, with with a disordered long flocks and they are flowing in the air and the third picture is the whistling sound of the west wind to the to be the dirge of the dying ear who is dying the ear is coming to an end so uh, so it's a dying ear and the ear is dying so west wind is the funeral song over the death of the ear and the huge tomb will also be erected over the dead ear so the darkness of the night which is spreading over the earth it will serve as the tomb of that tomb right what so the darkness it will serve the dome of that tomb so and the dense mass of the clouds they will form they will make a ceiling of the vast grave oh so the grave is very vast and the clouds they will form the ceiling and the darkness it will act as that of tomb right so uh, from the dense clouds in the sky forming the ceiling there will fall rain lightning and hails upon the earth so in the last in the end of the stanza the poet appeals again now he is appeals he appeals to west wind to um, hear his praise so you have you have example or we can say you have here allusion of meaned this is a reference and it's a this is a very you should keep in mind that meaned he she a female worshipper of the god of wine who was god of wine dionysus so in a very in a fit of drunken frenzy with her hair stranding straight on her head so in the second stanza you have uh, you are having three imagery imageries and one imagery is of the tree second is of the goddess meaned and the third is of the imagery of the sound of the west wind to be the dirge of the dying ear so this second stanza it describes the power of west wind over in the sky so now as we move in uh, towards the third stanza again the poet describes the power of west wind in the ocean thou who didst waken from his summer dreams the blue mediterranean where he lay lulled by the coil of his crystalline streams beside a pumic isle in bays bay and saw in sleep old palaces and towers quivering within the waves in tenser day all overgrown with azure moss and moss and flowers so sweet the sense fain picturing them thou for whose path the atlantic's level paths cleave themselves into chasm while far below the sea blooms and the oozy woods which were the sapless foliage of the ocean no thy voice and suddenly grow gray with fear and tremble and despoil themselves o here so these lines they uh, these lines suggest the power of west wind on the sea on the ocean mediterranean ocean so he is talking he is describing west wind over the agitating waves so west wind thou who is thou thou is west wind and it awakens it wakes or awakens the summer uh, the the blue mediterranean sea from from its dream so the blue mediterranean sea it is sleeping in his dream and it is waken by the approaching west wind so uh, the poet describes the change that is wrought by the wind on the sea surface mediterranean and the atlantic ocean so here you can see the mediterranean sea is personified right so here in the stanza in the beginning of the stanza you are having personification as the mediterranean sea is personified and it is uh, he is given 
द ह्यूमन क्वालिटीज एज इफ ही स्लीपिंग एंड ही इज़ हैविंग ड्रीम्स एंड ही इज वेकन बाय वेस्ट विंड so he regards it as a living being and it had gone uh, he had gone to sleep and who had been dreaming throughout summer till till in autumn west wind awakened him from sleep and interrupted his dream so the poet says that the uh, west wind disturbed the mediterranean in his sleep so during summer the mediterranean soothed by the pleasant sound of bright rivers and these rivers fell into his waters and it had gone to sleep so the sound of the rivers sound of the bright rivers it acts as a lullaby right so it is sleeping the sea is sleeping near an island made of lava in base bay not far from naples so in his sleep the mediterranean had dreams from this dream full sleep the mediterranean was aroused by the violence of west wind because west wind is very uh, tameless it is beyond uh, any control and so when west wind approaches ocean the ocean who who is supposed to have a sleep uh, who is having dreams it, uh, it is uh, he is awakened from his sleep and uh, his dream is disturbed so in his sleep the mediterranean dreamt of old palaces and towers of the cities that are buried under the sea during the earthquakes and the uh, volcanic eruptions slightly trembling in the bright and clear light of the ocean uh, below the surface so these palaces and towers most of such overpowering sweetness okay right you can so again we have a imagery a kind of imagery then the palaces and the towers most of such overpowering sweetness grow that the very thought of them they come so laden with a heavy perfume that sense of smell faints so shelley in uh, in in this poem uh, he describes the effect of west wind on the atlantic ocean and he says that when west wind blows on the atlantic its water is agitated so it's a very natural whenever you take just you just take water and just pass a uh, very agitating air into this so you you can see a trembling motion in the water so same imagery is presented so when west wind blows on the atlantic the water is agitated on the level surface of the atlantic ocean it becomes furrowed with many channels to enable the wind to rush along them so before the west wind blew the surface of the atlantic ocean was level but now it would seem as if the atlantic waters it will break to make path for the west wind to walk as if the west wind were a king were a very uh, awesome king so in this stanza the poet is describing the effect of west wind on the vegetation at the bottom of the atlantic ocean so the plants uh, at the bottom of the ocean they are very damp and they are having no sap in them they are very dry but when the west wind begins to blow these plants they becomes aware of its rival so they begin to tremble their leaves with fear and they become gray leaved because of fear and they start shedding their leaves so just as in autumn the trees on the earth shed their leaves similarly the plants at the bottom of the ocean also shed their leaves so hence the plants stand in great terror of the wind so here also shelley has expressed well known scientific fact because the vegetation below the sea surface it follows a kind of seasonal change in autumn season as the leaves of trees on land begin to fall the same process is repeated among the sea plants so you can see the west wind how it awakens from sleep the blue mediterranean which was dreaming of old palaces and the towers which once stood on its <coughs> shores so when the west wind blows on the atlantic the waves rise on both sides to prepare a sort of passage 
or we can say a kind of way it makes a way for the west wind so while far below the plants growing at the bottom of the ocean tremble with fear and shed their leaves so the stanza is quite remarkable for its vivid imagery and for the manner in which the two ocean mediterranean and the atlantic they are how they are personified so the phenomena alluded to in lines 36 42 is very well known to uh, every human being in a note shelley also pointed out that the vegetation at the bottom of the sea of rivers and of lakes it sympathizes with that of the land in change of seasons and it is also uh, we can say consequently influenced by the winds which announce that change so we have read three stanza of the poem west wind and in the next video we will take the next two stanzas i hope you you will revise these three stanza thank you